The intensity and excitement when I was in Cleveland was simply incredible, especially with the Trump factor and the country engaged as well. 24 million viewers, the biggest audience in Fox News Channel history. And things got very heated from the start. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several... O'Donnell. For the record, it was well beyond Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, I'm sure it was. Your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. I think the big problem this country has is being politically correct. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. I spoke with the host of The Kelly File on Friday night. This was an hour before Donald Trump made his harshest and most personal comments about her. Megan was in New York. Megan Kelly, welcome. Thank you. When you were crafting the questions and rewriting them and rejiggering them in that windowless room in the bowels of the Quicken Loan Center, were you trying to exploit each candidate's weak points? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it wasn't, exploit is not really the word I would choose, but it's, we were trying to drill down to their most vulnerable areas and then give them a chance to explain them and also give the audience a chance to see how they would handle that. So, you know, the job is to actually get past the talking points and go to the place where they might be most vulnerable with the Republican primary voters or, conversely, the, the place they might be most vulnerable in a general election and right. then give them the chance to knock that ball back to us. Well, let's go through some examples of the balls and strikes. So you asked Scott Walker, are you willing to let a woman die by denying her an abortion? That sounds pretty personal. No, it wasn't personal at all. I hit him from the left on abortion, and I hit Marco Rubio from the right on abortion. Uh, so, you know, I have no position on that whatsoever uh, in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, these, these political debates. But that's what you're going to hear from Hillary Clinton. You can bet your, your bottom dollar that if he gets the nomination, she's going to come after him and say that he's anti-woman, he's a war, part of the war on yeah. women, because he's against that exception. Um, so, so He better be able to game. handle Megyn Kelly. Oh, you can, if you can't get past me, how are you going to handle <laughs> Vladimir Putin? <laughs> so, when you asked uh, Jeb Bush about those who died in your brother's war, when you asked Donald Trump about um, nasty comments he made about women on Twitter about their looks, when you asked Ben Carson about his inexperience, did you worry about blowback? No. I mean, we, we had anticipated that some of the audience might boo us during the middle of our questions, and uh, we knew that might happen, and that was okay. We, we, you know, they can boo us. And some people are booing us now on Twitter. <laughs> but that's all part of it. You know, I, I think people get, they, they feel very passionately about their candidates. And I completely understand that. But my job is not to feel passionately about these candidates. My job is to go out there and ask probing um, questions that are hopefully smart and help the people learn something about this person. And in this context, his weaknesses. Uh, and I think I did that. And I think for the most part, the guys did very well in, in returning the volley. Yeah, they're professionals. Uh, do, do, when, do you remember what you said to Brett and Chris about what to do or not do if you personally came under attack? I said, let me handle it. Right. Uh, because they're both gentlemen, and so I didn't want them to in any way feel like they needed to come to my rescue. And Wallace looked at me and said, I know you can handle yourself. I would yeah. never. So, and, and Brett didn't <laughs> need that reminder either. But I just didn't want them to feel if anybody started to attack me, like I would be wondering where my compadres were uh, in the defense, but they knew I didn't need them, and thankfully I didn't at all. Right. There's been huge praise for you and the Fox team uh, from the mainstream media, from some liberal commentators. At the same time, as you know, a uh, lot of uh, criticism from con some conservative commentators, from some Fox viewers, from some candidates. Um, how do you feel about getting beat up a bit? It's okay. I'm a big girl. I can take it. <laughs> uh, as I say, I think I understand why people get upset because the, the stakes are very high here. You know, we're talking about the Oval Office and they, they, they really like the candidate they like and they don't want to see the candidate take any hits. You know, that, that is the way you feel and get to feel if you are just a voter as opposed to the journalist. We're not allowed to feel like that. We're not allowed to take those considerations into mind when we craft these debate questions. We have to hit them as hard as we can at this stage so the voters can figure out who's our guy, right? Like the Republicans are trying to figure out who's our guy or gal in, in the case of Carly Fiorina if she gets it. And then 
others are looking at it, you know, to be on this stage saying, okay, I really like this guy, but can he win? Because I may like this one candidate a lot, but I, I want to find the one who can win, who can beat Hillary Clinton. So in this context, given what we were doing, our job was to help them. And I think the way you do that is, to, is by exposing their weaknesses. So when some uh, allies of the candidates or commentators, as I say, say unfair questions, gotcha questions, you had an agenda. And I think the implication is, are you hurting the Republican Party? How do you respond? I, I don't think that my history as a journalist supports uh, bias on my part toward either party. Mm -hmm. And I think I had questions that the left loved last night, and I think that I had questions that the right loved as well. And that's fine. I mean, I, when I'm ticking off both sides, I'm in, I'm in my sweet spot. I think, you know, it, when it comes to, you know, somebody like Donald Trump, who complained, that's fine. You know, this was a big night for him, and it was the first time he ever participated in a presidential debate. So I'm sure the nerves were high, as they were for all the candidates. And, it, you know, he felt attacked. It wasn't an attack. It was a fair question. But I get it. And, and he's in the arena, and so am I. So it, it's okay with me that there's, you know, some consternation. I'm sure he'll get over that, and we'll be fine, and right. so will America. Well, I'm with you on the point about if you're getting attacked by both sides because I regularly get it from both sides and I feel like, therefore, I'm where I need to be, which exactly. is in the middle. Exactly. You have gotten a lot of well-deserved media attention. You're on the cover of the New York Times magazine. As the only woman out there on that stage on either side of the podium, did you feel any special pressure uh, or responsibility to probe certain kind of questions, for example? No, but uh, I mean, I, I think the reason it's it's good to have, you know, a panel that is somewhat diverse and people will make this argument in other contexts as well. You know, when it comes to uh, race or religion or what have you, it, you just bring a different set of experiences with you. So maybe the questions that I came up with were interesting to me because I'm a woman. I, I don't know. I just found, I asked about the things that I thought were interesting and would advance the debate and and whether gender factored into that or not i can't tell you i think you could have asked that same question that i asked on gender even if you were a man and i think it's a fair question no matter you know who asks it uh but i think it's important to have somewhat of a diverse you know panel because we all came with different life experiences right and that is why it's good not to have just a bunch of white guys on any in a situation like that um and so uh when you were crafting these questions and it's amazing how many hours and hours and meetings i mean people think this is such glamorous work where you and brett and chris went over it um part of what you're trying to do i presume is to kind of cut off the escape routes because they're all trying to deflect the question and pivot to something else that they're more comfortable with right mm -hmm. absolutely right so we try to bake all that into the, into the question you know understanding that you've done this I'm still going to ask you about that. And we try to press forward in the questions so we can sort of box them in so that the audience doesn't have to listen to talking points. And I actually think we did a good job of that. I think we, that, that was a successful effort on our part on, on uh, Thursday night. As for the glamour, I'll tell you, I, I, I told this story. You were there. I, yes. on debate we did, day. We didn't know if you were going to make it. I, I almost didn't make that debate. I, there was a moment on Thursday afternoon where I said, I'm not going to make it. They're going to have to get Brett and Chris to ask the questions I have written. And I, I just started to go downhill. I think it was food poisoning. First, the splitting headache came. Then I started to feel very nauseous. Then I actually got sick. Then I went home to the hotel room to lie down for a little bit. And I was still sick. And then the, the beautiful, wonderful savior of my life, Dr. David Silverman of New York, called me in some anti-nausea medicine. Who knew this existed? It's like you don't have to have a stomach virus anymore. I had no idea. To this moment, I don't even know what it was. My assistant, Abby, was dealing with him, feeding me full of medicine, and I was sweating with the washcloth on me. It was 3 in the afternoon. I was like, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And lo and behold, by 347, I was like, a ray of light. I, I feel it. it. I might be there. And sure enough, by 5.30, I was back in hair and makeup. And by 9 o'clock that night, I, actually, we took a picture of me walking into uh, the, the you know, arena. And it was like one of these because I, was, I couldn't believe it. The, the power of modern medicine. Somehow I knew you'd be there if you had to crawl out on that stage. Megan <laughs> Kelly, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Howie. I know you all have opinions on this. Send me a tweet at Howard Kurtz and we'll look at all of them. Can get me a lot on Facebook. When we come back, the other two Fox debate moderators, Chris Wallace and Brett Baer. And later, our exclusive focus group, why Republican voters feel the media are being unfair to Donald Trump and way too nice to Hillary Clinton.